So every mammal has an endocannabinoid system, and that's really the mechanism by which it works in the body. And there's, there's cannabinoid receptors on almost every cell in your body. And it can have, you know, your cells also have, some of them have opioid receptors, for example. And if you think about it as sort of a lock and key situation, if you've got these receptors on all these cells and then you introduce some phytocannabinoids from a plant like hemp. Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, here with you every week. And I have to tell you guys, first of all, so excited. Last week was our 100th episode, and I also launched my new website. So check out asaladwithasideoffries.com if you haven't already. And with all the buildup to the 100th episode, I didn't really talk about it that much. So click over there when you have a minute, and I'd love to hear from you. So that brings us to this week's episode, which this topic has been on my list for almost two years, and I finally have the right person to talk to us about it. So why has it been on my list for so long? So it's a global market, was estimated at $2.8 billion US dollars in 2020. It's estimated to be $3.5 billion in 2021, with a global market expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 21.2% from 2021 to 2028. I mean, this is massive. And that's not even the crazy part. To me, the craziest part is that almost everyone by now has heard of it, but most people, even those trying it, have no idea what it actually is or what it's doing. <laughs> so I'm so excited to tackle this. Do you know what it is? Actually, you do because you read the title already. But so today we are tackling CBD. So, and in our quest on this show to clear up the confusion, confusion and misinformation in wellness, I had to cover this. And with me is Sarah Nilsson. So Sarah is the vice president of sales at Green Compass. And with her 20-year career focused on sales, she's a veteran of the social selling industry, mentoring emerging leaders, and building sales teams and more. But now, through partnering with Green Compass, she spent the last couple of years diving deep into the world of CBD. So Green Compass is fast emerging as a trusted source for quality hemp products, innovation, and transparency. In less than three years, Green Compass has made a name for itself within the CBD circles as the brand to watch and the brand to emulate. So Sarah is also a published author, 40 Under 40 Award recipient, and has been featured in many publications over her career. Now she can add appearing on Salad with a Side of Fries to her <laughs> list of accolades. <laughs> Mom of two, grandmother of one, all of them reside in Washington State. In her free time, she loves giving back to the community through hosting large public festivals to support charities and chasing sunset beaches. Love it. So friends, help me welcome Sarah Nilsson. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Sarah, welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I wish I could hear that every morning. Like, night, Wouldn't it be nice if you got up and someone just introduced you to the day like that? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, so how have you been? It's I'm early where you are now. I'm great. Yes, I, I live near Seattle and, um, you know, we're heading into our summer. So it's all all hands on deck, everyone outside on, on the water. So it's been it's been great. And, we're, and, you know, obviously with work, we're in a really busy time. We've got big events coming on and new product launches and stuff. So everything is rolling smoothly. How about you? Awesome. Good. So far, so good. You know, plugging along, right? Yes. <laughs> so we have so much to cover today. Um, you know, I want to get into it, but I have to start by telling our members what they're getting this week. So your recipe, oh, you guys are going to love this one. Your recipe is for summer Buddha bowls with turmeric chickpeas. So for all of you who want to focus more on plant-based meals that still have plenty of protein, this one is for you. And since it's barbecue season, it also has grilled corn. So delicious. And thanks to Sarah and our friends at Green Compass, you guys are getting 20% off their best-selling 
product. It's the USDA certified organic nano jellies. They're safe for everyone in the family, offering increased bioavailability. Again, all USDA certified organic ingredients, so much more. We're going to talk more about it. So your discount is built into the link. So just click through the email and you'll get 20% off the nano jelly. So if you're thinking that this recipe sounds yummy, you're right. And if you want this discount because it's too good to pass up, make sure you're a member. Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. For $10 a month, you'll get weekly recipes, a monthly article or tool, extra discounts from me and our partners like today, and access to quarterly live Q&A sessions. So it's a total deal when you take advantage of the full offerings. You are saving more than that $10 a month cost. Seriously, a no-brainer way to show yourself that your health is a priority. Plus, by being a member, you're supporting this podcast and this community so we can continue bringing you new episodes and experts every single week. So remember, glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries, or click the link in the show notes, or click the membership tab on our new website. It's three clicks from there. You'll enter your email payment method, tap subscribe. That's it. You will get this week's summer bootable with turmeric chickpeas recipe and 20% off the USDA certified organic nano jellies from Sarah and Green Compass. Okay. Awesome. So Sarah, I, I love having you talk about this actually, because until a couple of years ago, you were like many of the rest of us, you know, not necessarily knowing everything about this industry. So as a jumping off point, What were some of like the biggest aha moments you had when first learning about this? Like hemp, marijuana, CBD, legal, illegal, those kinds of things. Yes. Great question. Loaded question because I really didn't know anything. (laughs) Um, And I live in Washington state, as we mentioned, and everything is legal here. So there was no taboo or stigma around it really. Um, but I didn't know the difference between hemp and CBD or, or excuse me, hemp and marijuana really thought they were sort of one in the same. Um, what I quickly learned was that there's a massive difference. Not only is one legal and one's not illegal, one gets you high, one doesn't. But the, the easiest explanation is that marijuana is really high in THC, which is the um, cannabinoid that gives you that psychoactive feeling, right? And low in CBD, which is more of the medicinal side of the plant. And conversely, hemp is really high in CBD and very low in THC. So um, that's like the long and short of it. And I, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know how to say cannabinoids. I didn't know what cannabinoids were. And so I definitely had to take a crash course. But I think even still, it's interesting to me how many people have that same reaction? Like when I, when I travel all the time and people say, what do you do? And when I start talking about CBD, they, they make kind of a wisecrack about, oh, you're a legal drug dealer or something (laughs) because they really don't know. So it's kind of interesting. Um, But the passing of the farm bill in early 2019, basically Mm -hmm. separated Uh, hemp from marijuana, taking hemp, industrial hemp, off of the controlled substance list. And the definition of that is that it has less than 0.3% THC. So as long as your your, um, hemp has less than 0.3% THC, then it's legal, all 50 states, to, to buy it, sell it, grow it, consume it, all things. Awesome. And there's so much science to support this. You know, I think... It's interesting because a lot of people don't really understand how it works in the body either, right? Mm-hmm. So because so every mammal has an endocannabinoid system and that's really the mechanism by which it works in the body. So help us understand what is the endocannabinoid system? What does it do and how does it connect to the cannabinoids in hemp? Yes, great question. So The endocannabinoid system wasn't even discovered until the 90s, which sounds crazy, right? I don't know, you know, about you, but the 90s to me yesterday, especially when you're talking about science. But all mammals um, have an endocannabinoid system and there's, there's cannabinoid receptors on almost every cell in your body. And it can have, you know, your cells also have, some of them have opioid receptors, for example. 
And if you think about it as sort of a lock and key situation, if you've got these receptors on all these cells and then you introduce some phytocannabinoids from a plant like hemp, then as it's um, going through your body, if you picture these little cannabinoids kind of swimming and looking for the lock for their for that particular key. That's why because they're on your uh, so many of your cells and the endocannabinoid system is responsible for regulating your physiological processes, which is mood, sleep, digestion, uh, your skin, your lymph system, everything, basically. So if something's out of whack, it's going to present differently for different people. So, you know, one day you wake up, you've got back pain or, you, you know, you're having trouble sleeping or your mood is, you know, unstable mm -hmm. or whatever. If you take CBD and it's going to just, when it enters your body, if you, if I could give you a visual of it kind of like floating through your body, finding the place that where it needs and then inserting into that lock and, you know, putting that system at rest or balance, otherwise known as homeostasis. And that's really the purpose of CBD, which is why one particular bottle, for example, of a, a, a tincture can do so many different things for different people. They take the same, same product and, you know, you could have 20 people all taking it for something different. So, you know, that is to me in itself is fascinating and really totally. speaks to the, to the um, integrity of the plant that, I mean, I could take one thing and really anywhere in my body that's essentially out of whack, this CBD can, can help support is just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. It is. And there, so like the lock and key thing, the way you describe it is very similar to how I talk about antioxidants mm -hmm. and similar to antioxidants. It also has like this anti-inflammatory sort of property or response in the symptom, in the system. Um, and you started to talk about, you know, pain, sleep challenges, mood, anxiety. Those are some of the biggest ones. Are there others that people, whether it's stories you've heard, I know you had an interesting experience when you first tried it, um, but other like studies documenting, you know, common symptoms for which people are turning to CBD? Yeah, it's interesting. I think more and more people are open to it as an alternative, probably because there's more available, you know, research and it's kind of becoming more of a topic of conversation mainstream. Um, and then when people do their research, they're really finding positive, you know, information and uh, about how CBD could support whatever, you know, ailment they're dealing with. So, you know, along with all of this, you can imagine enter the FDA <laughs> and they're like, whoa, right. you can't say that. You can't say that. So we're really, you know, um, under some strict compliance guidelines as far as like, you know, saying that it can help with this particular thing. So I always tell people if there's anything that they're going through that they would like some, you know, supplemental support and they're not sure, just Google it, you know, CBD and X or whatever. And they'll probably find some great supporting documentation of, you know, that there would be no reason not to, to give it a try. Um, you know, that's pets, men, women, children, everybody. We always encourage people to consult with a physician or a pediatrician or a veterinarian, of course. But, you know, like we said, all mammals, all ages, all, all. So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a catch all um, without all the nasty side effects that you might get from, you know, pharmaceuticals. So, I know that um, pain, discomfort, um, mood, mm -hmm. and um, sleep are definitely, I would say, the top three, as you mentioned, of, of what people initially look to CBD for, probably because that's what you see most, you know, prevalent, yep. um, like on the media and, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. But what we find is a lot of people might start with that and then they say, oh, gosh, this other thing has improved too. I didn't even think about it, you know. Um, so it's, you know, it's been really probably the most rewarding part of our job at Green Compass is being able to hear those testimonials constantly about people coming up to us talking about how their lives have changed. And it's just, you know, it's, it's super rewarding. And we just are, are grateful to be able to help spread the word. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think it's one of those things for people too. And you just mentioned this, but really something that comes from nature that addresses so many possible challenges and without any side effects, like 
wow. Right. <laughs> right? Like that's so unusual. unusual. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. It so, feels like why, of course, why wouldn't you at least give it a go? Right. Um, but I think too, that we, one of the challenges we face is if you think about it, you know, one, helping people understand or be more comfortable with the fact that it's not psychoactive. So that's kind of hurdle number yep. one, right? Then another hurdle that, you know, is very real is because it's an unregulated industry, there is CBD everywhere, right? You're seeing it at the, the gas station, at the, you know, Target, at the, you know, wherever you can buy anything, you can get your YooHoo and your CBD, right? <laughs> and I think that because it's unregulated, whatever you're purchasing at those those types of places isn't necessarily sourced ethically or whatever, and also might not even be really um, indicative of what's actually in the bottle. And so if I were to go purchase it somewhere and try it, and then I'm like, oh, well, CBD didn't work for me, when in fact, it wasn't that CBD didn't work for me, it was that I got a bottle that had really no CBD in it or, you know, yep. who knows what was in it. And so that's probably the other biggest thing hurdle that we're dealing with right now is the flooding of the market with product. For, an example is hemp if or cannabis, if you don't know, it's a, like a scavenger plant, right? So it absorbs everything that's in the soil, everything that's in the air, everything that's in the water. And in other countries like China, they use the plant to clean the environment, to clean the soil, to clean the air. And then they used to just get rid of it and burn it. And now they sell it to us. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, thinking about it logically, if it's cleaning all the toxins out of the soil and absorbing all that into the plant, like why would I want to put that into my body? And then couple that, what I'll call dirty biomass, for lack of a better word, and then it gets processed in a way where they're adding, you know, chemicals in the extraction process, or they're cheating on the levels of CBD or THC or, you know, whatever they're putting in the bottle. They're using a carrier oil that's ineffective. Um, then they, you know, here's, here's this great bottle of CBD. They put a beautiful uh, sticker on it or marketing logo on it. They put a great price point on it. And then Joe consumers like, oh, CBD, there it is. I'll grab it. 10 bucks. Yep. Like, like, you know, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket. I hope this helps me with whatever I'm dealing with. And then it doesn't shocking. And then, you know, then the, then the word on the street as well, it doesn't work. So it's really, really important that you're able to source where your CBD comes from and you're using a trusted brand or trusted source so that you know that, you know, you're actually getting real quality CBD. If you want it to work in your body, then of course you want to make sure that you're you're giving it every chance of of supporting your your health journey. Absolutely. It's like you're reading my mind because this is exactly what I want to go to next. And it's interesting too, because I do a lot of work with supplementation in my practice, and it's the same thing we talk about with any supplement on the market, that there is sort of this um mixed bag of what we're actually getting you know, there is some regulation in other supplements about what it says in the bottle being what's in it. But if what it is on the bottle is actually based on the studies and therapeutic dosage and those kinds of things. So really quick, before we dig deeper into dosage and all those kinds of things, a quick message from our partner for this episode, Lumiere de V. Lumiere de V Skincare was founded by Amber Reidinger McLaughlin and responds to her own experience of mere marginal results from countless costly creams. She realized the revitalization of her youthful skin could only occur if she developed products herself. Working closely with beauty scientists and exploring the most advanced ingredients from the earth and sea, Amber created Lumiere de V, the next generation of skincare. The extensive line of luxury skincare products is designed to address all skin types and concerns with the highest quality natural ingredients and powerful formulas that help heal, soothe, moisturize, and protect. Lumiere de V acts as first aid for your skin. The result, rejuvenated, luminous, beautiful looking skin. So maybe CBD is part of your evening routine. A big piece of my evening routine is washing my face. And I use Lumiere de V every morning and night. Uh, one of my favorite pieces now is I love their products, but also 
they just came out with these skincare brushes. So now every time I wash my face, I literally feel like I am at the spa. I'm I'm totally obsessed with them. My mom was here visiting and she couldn't believe how soft they were. I'm obsessed. You get four brushes in a zip pouch for $45. And for being a salad with a side of fries listener, you get 10% off. So text the word skin, S-K-I-N, to 844-947-4846. You'll receive the link and coupon code right to your phone. Again, text the word skin, S-K-I-N, to 844-947-4846 to try Lumia DeV skincare and get 10% off. This is a toll-free number. Standard text and data rates may apply. Okay. Sarah, so you touched on choosing our products, identifying the source, right? We want to make sure that we're looking for, you know, where it came from, not China. Uh, You mentioned before the 0.3, is it 0.3 milligrams? Like how do we measure that? What are we looking for and how do we find the source? Uh, 0.3% by volume. So, um, you know, a good quality CBD product would have some kind of third-party lab testing attached to it that should be easily accessible to a consumer. So for example, if you picked up a a Green Compass product, you could flip it over, there'd be a QR code that you could scan and it would take you right to the third-party lab report. It would show you how much CBD, it would show you, you know, they test for all these different pesticides and chemicals and THC and, and all all the other cannabinoids in the the makeup of what exactly is in that particular batch. So if you can't trace it, then I would stay away from it. Just, you know, rule number one in general. (laughs) Yeah. And a lot of those bottles, yeah. And a lot of those bottles have like a QR code or something on it, right. That you can scan and Mm -hmm. it should take you to that certificate of analysis. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. So then the other interesting thing to me about CBD products is that whether, like you said, whether you're in the drugstore or a specialty store, there are gels and skincare and other topicals. And then I've seen a bug spray. I've seen literally everything under the sun. There's tinctures versus, you know, gummies. Like, so help us understand why would we choose to have CBD as an ingredient in each of these categories, like how do we get the most benefit? Does it matter if it's topical versus ingested? And, you know, what else are we looking for in this? Okay. That's another great question. Uh, I kind of <laughs> feel, I probably feel bad for consumers these days because there's so much smoke and mirrors, so much fancy marketing, and the average person wouldn't know. You know, I, I know like for me, for example, I don't know anything about wine. So if I need to buy a bottle, buy a bottle of wine, I'm looking at, that's a cool label, right? right. <laughs> and people who are wine connoisseurs are going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's, you know, I can't believe you would put that in your body. <laughs> so I get it. Um, so I want to try to be as, um, you know, layman's terms here as I can. So, that, you know, t- to benefit your your listeners here and give you some some value add. But There's definitely several different delivery methods for CBD, all of which can be very effective. Um, Topical, sublingual, which is where you put it under your tongue and it's absorbed through the glands in your mouth, um, water soluble, et cetera. And so, and for, and because CBD is CBD, you know, you, it doesn't necessarily matter which method you take it for, you know, you're going to get benefit. Um, There are some things that are a little bit more, for example, if you have, if you're taking it for sore joints and muscles, then taking a a topical application is smart because it's quick, it's spot treatment, and you can feel that difference right away. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a couple of things to to be wary of. Number one, when you're taking a topical, you want to make sure that the Carrier oil is something that your body is going to absorb effectively, like uh, MCT oil is the best, hemp oil works too, but something that your body's going to go, oh, I know what this is. I recognize this molecular structure and I will, you know, absorb this. Um, And you want to hold it under your tongue and let it do its job. If you're taking an oil-based tincture and you drop it and swallow it, it's going right into your digestive system and you're really limiting the bioavailability. So that's just a tip, a pro tip for you and something to be considering. Okay. What's the carrier oil? Um, 
when you're going with a, like a gummy, for example, 90%, and that's Sarah's percentage, that's not necessarily documented, but the vast (laughs) majority of gummies on the market are not formulated with a nano uh, CBD. So nano emulsion process is basically where you shrink the the, the molecule down so small and encapsulate it in water that it's water soluble instead of an oil based. So there doesn't need to be a carrier oil if you're following me. Okay. If you don't do that, which most companies don't because number one, it takes longer Two, it's, it's, you know, cost a lot more and three, they don't have the technology or the bandwidth to be able to do it. And the average consumer wouldn't know, right. Wouldn't know to look for that. So then you're just taking a gummy and it's going into your digestive system. And I'm sure you're probably nodding your head because it's the same with uh, supplements, <laughs> right? Yep. And you're really, no, there's no bio, bioavailability or very little because it's, you know, it's going through the digestive system and all the acids in the stomach and you're, it's not getting where it needs to go. So if you do the nano emulsion process and you um, shrink it down so your body can absorb it, then you're getting great bioavailability through that method. And it's easy. A lot of people like to just pop a, a gummy and be done with it versus having to hold something under their tongue, that kind of thing. But but it's, a, it's a, again, kind of going back to starting with quality CBD. That's number one. But then you got to make sure that the, the uh, manufacturing processes are up to par to give you a fighting chance of getting the CBD into your, into your cannabinoid system, right? So, and then... There's, you know, technology is ever changing, science is ever changing, and they're always looking for new ways to um, use the plant, different cannabinoids within the plant, all of that. So, you know, this is something that's, that's a moving target, but for what's available right now, um, all three of those can be a really effective delivery method. And so just a quick question, if it's topical like spot treatment, are we looking for water soluble or a carrier oil? Um, Both. Right. Because there's carry oils that, you know, are easily absorbed into the skin. And then also there's nano, um, nano topicals, which are great too. It's, um, definitely something you want to, to, to look into because anytime you're putting something on your skin and you're with the, uh, idea that it's going to help a muscle or something underneath the skin, you want to make sure that it's going to penetrate, right? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, exactly. Not, not and I, or, you know, anything like that, but you know, something that's going to penetrate the skin effectively. Yeah. And I love what you were talking about, about, you know, there's sort of, as with all healing, there's spot treatment and there's root cause treatment. And I think it's interesting CBD can do both provided we give it that opportunity. And that's a lot of what you're talking about. So what I'm also hearing from you is that maybe, you know, the toothpaste, the shampoo, the bug spray probably don't need CBD in those. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you're going to see definitely some novelty things on the market that, you know, is there some benefit to the CBD? Probably if it's done right. Is it, you know, that much better than your normal toothpaste? Probably not. You know, you mentioned there are some natural anti-inflammatory properties in CBD and different things. Um, There is some um, natural sun protection benefits. Um, But I I would say this, that if it's done right, then CBD is nothing but beneficial no matter how you take it. But unfortunately, I don't trust (laughs) the market right. that they're not, you know, a lot of it, you will see, you know, sort of hype. Um, but because it does so many things and there's so many different ways to deliver it, you know, again, I, that would be my final answer is that if it's done right, it's effective, you know, in, in all kinds of products, but I don't think that's what we're seeing. Yeah. And similar to that, and similar to what you were saying before about gummies, and if we're actually absorbing what we're ingesting or taking. I think dosage is a piece here that especially in CBD is incredibly confusing. <laughs> you know, so help us interpret what it says in the bottle or package, how much we're actually getting per serving. Mm-hmm. And at what point are we just wasting money? Great question. So, you know, dosing can be tricky and I want to preface this by saying that we're not doctors. So we always would yes. encourage you to check with your physician or your veterinarian, you know, before diving into this. 
on packaging, there is always a suggested dose, which is based on, you know, the average person and, you know, things like this don't go by weight. Like, for example, if you're X pounds or X height, then you should take this much. It's not, you know, it doesn't work like that, like anesthesia might or something. Um, because your body naturally produces cannabinoids anyway. And some people are cannabinoid deficient. Some people might have a surplus. So it really does take a little time to find your sweet spot. So I would encourage people to, you know, start low and slow, meaning start with a lower yeah. dose and just titrate up and meaning that see how you feel after a couple of days. If you're not noticing much of a difference, maybe you take a little more, you know, that kind of thing until you find your proverbial sweet spot and then sort of stick there. So um, it is kind of a, a moving target and also varying by delivery method, um, that kind of thing. But in general, we tell people to take like one dropper a day under the tongue or one gummy a day. Um, as far as the topicals is as needed, you can do it up to several times a day, depending on, you know, your circumstances. But so it is important to read the labels and look at that, but use that more as a guide. Um, and if you're new to CBD or you're sensitive to supplements, um, then, you know, we encourage you to start, start slow and just move up every couple of days. But another pro tip is to write down maybe in a journal or on some kind of a paper, what you're feeling so that you remember, you know, okay, I first day with my CBD, I felt this difference, no difference, or that, oh, I noticed this, that kind of thing. Like you might not be taking it for headaches, for example, but then you notice, wow, I haven't had a headache in a week. And I normally, you know, have a headache every mm -hmm. day, but just write down how you're feeling so that you can go back and, and look at that and, and just keep adjusting your dose till you feel like you find, found the sweet spot. And then help us understand too, because you and I had a conversation about like, it might say there's 500 milligrams in the bottle and it's a 30 milliliter bottle. So like we have to do the math to figure out what we're actually getting per dropper or dose or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. That can be confusing too. So if you were to pick up a bottle of CBD and it said that there were a thousand milligrams of CBD. What that means is that there's a thousand milligrams of CBD in the entire bottle. So if the dropper is one milliliter, which is pretty common, and there's 30 milliliters in the bottle, which is a common size, then you would take that thousand milligrams and divide it by 30. And that's how many milligrams are actually in each dose. So, um, for example, this, you know, this can be really confusing. And let's just say that we're talking about a thousand milligram and I should have prepared and done the math. I think it's 33.3 right, right. <laughs> .3 milligrams yep. per dose. Okay. Then you go look at, for example, I'll use green compass as an example. So 33 milligrams of CBD per dose, um, sublingual delivery. Then I look over at my nano jellies and I'm like, Whoa, there's only five milligrams in a nano jelly. So does that mean I need to take six or seven of them to equal the same CBD dose that's in my tincture. No, <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Thank because, you for this. This is gold. I just yeah. want like everybody listen to this. This is so important. Okay, <laughs> this is ahead. really important. Yes. Because the delivery is different, the amount of CBD is different. So it's all about bioavailability. And what that means is how much of the CBD is actually getting into the system. Okay. In a sublingual delivery system, because it's it's mi mixed with the oil, it goes under the tongue, you know, we talked about that earlier, you need a higher dose of CBD to get the same bioavailability, the same amount of CBD into your system that you, uh, you need to get, excuse me, use a lot higher dose, I'm not sure if I said that, a higher dose of that then you would a gummy with that's nano sized that's going to be um, go through your system um, when you ingest it. So that's so best way to look at it is one serving of a nano jelly that says five milligrams of CBD is actually equal bioavailability to about approximately a thousand milligram tincture dose. Now, how's that for confusing? <laughs> right. So, but wait, I, question if I'm sorry to interrupt you, if the jelly or gummy is not nano sized. Correct. Then don't take it. <laughs> then you're wasting your money. Can I say that? No, it's you're getting much less bioavailability at, in general at all because it gets eaten up with your stomach acids and stuff. And, you know, you're really not 
getting the bioavailability. So I guess even more important than the dose of your of your jelly is my advice to you is if it's not, you know, something that's going to be um, absorbed, water soluble, then I wouldn't be taking it anyway. I'd stick with a sublingual. Got it. Um, and then once we choose it, we're starting low and slow, like you said, and probably giving a couple days before you titrate up in your dosage to see how you feel at a different dosage, right? Yeah. And, you know, everybody's a little different. Um, some people aren't as sensitive. And so, you know, they're like popping whatever and they're good. Some people are, you know, much more methodical about their supplements. So, uh, yeah. So some people start with a regular dose and they're fine and they love it and they're good. Some people, you know, want to be a little bit more methodical about it and start start lower than that. But definitely give yourself a couple of days in between. Um, so your body starts working with it because, you know, whatever symptoms, for lack of a better word, we're presenting, they don't, you know, it's not instantaneous, right? Some things, some people will say, oh my gosh, I, I, after one nano jelly, I slept like a baby for the first time in 10 years. I can't, my life has changed. Well, great. That's not the normal response. You know, we never know because it just depends on how sensitive the system is. Yeah. I love it. I think it's so helpful you know, for all of us to just start to understand what it is that we're getting, what makes a difference and what's happening in our system. And to your point, like you said before, you know, keeping some sort of log of what you're noticing, because like you said, you might be taking it, thinking about one thing, but what you actually experience is another. Right. Right. And that's my favorite part. That happened to me. I would say that I'm, you know, healthy in general. There was nothing specific that I was hoping to um, help with. I was new to CBD. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I noticed after time that it really helped me with my restless legs, which is something that ripples in my life because I travel so much and I always get restless legs on an airplane, for example. Then I get a little bit of anxiety around it. Like, oh, when am I going to get them? And how, what's my exit strategy from this row if I need to stand up? (laughs) And so by taking it, I noticed like, wait a second, you know, this is really supporting that. So, um, I, that's why I like the whole journal thing because it's, there's things that might pop up that you just never even knew, you know? So, for sure. So, I want to jump to our short list of rapid fire off topic questions. Before okay. we do that, anything, final thoughts or anything we missed on CBD? Um, the only other thing that I want to highlight is that you know, looking for something, again, the QR code, when you're out looking, looking for the carrier oil, looking for the source and USDA certified organic is huge. And again, very limited options when it comes to that other than green compass, wink, wink, but it's a very (laughs) tedious, time consuming, expensive process. But what it means is that everything associated with the production of that is USDA certified organic, the soil, the seeds, the processing, um, the extraction process, every other ingredient that's in that, the whole thing, so that the finished product and every step of the way. And, you know, if you're trying, if it comes to your health, then I want to start with what's clean and I want to start with what's, you know, most effective. So I would encourage people to, to keep an eye out for things like that. Awesome. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. This is our rapid fire for every expert who joins us. What's the best thing you've done for your health this week? And what's the naughtiest thing you've done related to your health this week? Oh, okay. The best thing I've done for my health this week is I started a little smoothie sort of cleanse thing (laughs) with, you know, just fruits and spinach and stuff, which is big for me because I don't like eating like that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) The worst thing is I had ice cream for dinner. So clearly (laughs) I'm already feeling. What flavor? Um, Gelato. Um, Salted caramel. It's my kryptonite. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you weren't in sales and paving the way in the CBD industry with Green Compass, what would you do? I would be a soap opera um, actress. Ask anyone. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) I love that. That might be the best answer I've ever received. Okay. (laughs) Favorite book on any topic or a fiction book? Anything other than your area of expertise? Oh, other than my area of expertise. Ooh, okay. Um, can I say my book or that that would be cheesy? Um, ooh, ooh, Tell ooh. us your book and another one. Um, my book is called Does This Book Make My Butt Look Big? And it's a memoir. It's hilarious. 
it has nothing to do with anything, but true stories about me. Um, and I would say that my favorite book that does, I'm, I'm so into self-development and all of that kind of has to do with yeah. me. So I'm still going to say The Entrepreneurial Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy. Ooh, great book. Mm -hmm. If you could cure one ailment, disease, or sickness, what would it be? I'm trying to avoid saying cancer because I feel like that's a given. Um, I, I, my daughter was recently diagnosed with MS, so I'm going to say MS. Mm, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you were a superhero, what would be your superpower? Um, like you mean what actually talent, the like kind of hidden talent I have? Is that what no, you or make it no, like be? yeah, what you would want it to be? Oh, um, I would love. This is not a very good answer, but I would love to be able to sing and somehow that whatever could save the world or you know kill the bad guys or whatever needs to happen in the moment but I just I mean that's a talent that I've always wished I had is to be able to sing I love it what's your biggest pet peeve <laughs> my biggest pet peeve uh is liars I can't I cannot Ooh. deal with people that are are dishonest on purpose. Like, I don't, I don't even understand how they function in society. It's just crazy. Totally. And finally, in your opinion, what's the next frontier in wellness? Mm. Um, I really do. And this might be, can, you might say, oh, of course you said that. But I really do feel like CBD is just scratching the surface. Um, that's just one of the cannabinoids in the plant. And they're doing so much research about the other cannabinoids and really drilling down targeted ca cannabinoids and terpenes. And I just feel like over the next decade, we're going to see so many advancements and mainstreaming of, you know, using this plant for medicinal purposes that, you know, I'm just really, really grateful to, to have a small role in, in learning about it and sharing about it. And, and I, I, I feel like if we had this conversation in 10 years, it would be a much different conversation. Yeah. Well, and like you said, the research on this is so young relative to other things that we know in health and wellness and stuff like that. So yeah. Sarah, thank you one more time. So, so appreciate you being here. Tell everybody how to connect with you and Green Compass, uh, where to learn more. Yes. So we've got a great informative website, greencompassglobal.com. You can check us out there, our social media handles, same, Green Compass Global on Facebook and Instagram. And we are going to be um, launching a podcast in just a couple of weeks, and it will be called Getting to the Root of It, and we will be discussing all things CBD and hemp-based wellness, so make sure and check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Just appreciate your time and energy. I know your alerts are going off. You have important places to be. So thank you. Thank you. And we will talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Jen. Thanks again, Sarah. That brings us now to our nutrition nugget. This week, we're talking about the dental slim diet control. So you guys, this one might take the cake. Okay. It is the latest weight control device brought to the world by a couple of scientists in New Zealand. A friend of mine sent me a link to this article and I just couldn't let it go. I had to address it and I figured let's do this here so that we can all have this conversation. So starting with what this dental slim diet control device is. Okay, so researchers in New Zealand at the University of, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Otago, Odigo? Somebody from New Zealand, tell me how to say it. So at this university, they created the device. It is a metal contraption that gets fitted to the back teeth in someone's mouth, one part on the upper, one part on the lower, and then they're magnetic, so they're attracted to each other, and there's a locking bolt, which prevents the person from opening their mouth more than two millimeters which is basically enough space to drink something, and that's about it. So the person is then on a liquid diet when the contraption 
is secured in place. So they say it doesn't restrict breathing and allows for free speech. It's fitted by a dentist and it does have an emergency release. You know, should somebody need to do that, there's like a special tool to release it. So they did a study. In the trial, people lost an average of 6.36 kilograms or about 14 pounds in two weeks. So I would, you know, pros and cons, <laughs> right? I think on the pro side, it is non-invasive. It's reversible, relatively economical. And for some people, they called it an attractive alternative to surgical procedures. They claim it has no adverse consequences. Now, you guys can hear it in my voice, <laughs> right? I beg to differ. Um, and the Twitter sphere, by the way, jumped all over this. So people on Twitter called it evil, hateful, disturbing, a torture device, right? So then after that, the university posted some clarifications on their Twitter account. So they said, and I'm quoting here, to clarify, the intention of the device is not intended as a quick or long-term weight management tool. So <laughs> you guys, that literally made me laugh out loud. It's not quick or long-term. So what is it? <laughs> right? So then they went on to say, I'm reading it here. They said, it's aimed to assist people who want to undergo surgery, but can't have the surgery until they've lost weight. So after two or three weeks, they have the magnets disengaged, the device removed. There's a period of less restrictive eating and, you know, go back into treatment. So the claim, they claim that this is a phased approach supported by dietitians, And... <laughs> I suppose, yes, technically it is a phased approach because there's a relative like beginning, middle, end sort of thing. It's not the same thing the whole time. But this device really is not supporting optimal nutrition, health, or weight management, which is what is the objective of a phased approach recommended by dietitians. Right. So it's like we're sort of taking this thing and twisting it a little bit. You know, not for nothing, the device is supposed to be used as a short term piece to jumpstart things. So that is, in fact, a quick weight loss tool. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. So it's interesting, though, this isn't the first incidence of the idea of wiring people's jaws shut. So in the 1980s, there were some countries literally wiring jaws shut. At the time, there were issues with people choking on vomit, gum disease, which is one of the first things I thought of also when hearing about the dental slim. Some people had ongoing jaw issues and... They also reported, this is from the 1980s stuff, acute psychiatric conditions. That was also one of my big concerns when I heard about this. So then the kicker to me of the Dental Slim's own clinical findings is that it noted that participants had trouble pronouncing some words, felt tense and embarrassed only occasionally, so I guess that was supposed to be in the pro column, and hardly ever reported a change in taste sensation or felt uncomfortable drinking. It went on to say, though, participants occasionally had discomfort and felt that life in general was less satisfying. But overall, people tolerated the device for the two-week period with satisfactory weight loss. So fundamentally, I just think this has tremendous implications. I think what it communicates is that two weeks of a liquid diet will get you tremendous results. It does, like, I don't recommend this approach, <laughs> this plan of liquids only, right? We know our digestive system is designed to work. We need fiber. When we're drinking only liquids, we're not getting that fiber. The machine to create a juice or a smoothie is doing a lot of the work that our digestive system is meant to do, which means it raises the glycemic impact of everything we're eating. 
So we can certainly monitor that, you know, with some protein and quality fats, but it becomes increasingly uphill. That's not what's best for our GI tract. And then psychologically to me, you know, when someone's going for weight loss surgery, they're generally not in a high energy, positive state of mind, right? I think then you add this device to the situation where people even reported feeling somewhat less satisfied with life, like not a great situation. And I have to tell you, like when I work with someone, part of the process, part of our objective in working together is to improve their satisfaction with life and increase human interaction. So the fact that this device diminishes both of those are giant red flags for me. And then talking about situations where it's recommended for somebody to lose weight ahead of weight loss surgical procedures. So the goal in that is to improve potential outcomes, right? Or increase the likelihood of positive outcomes. So sometimes the doctor wants those patients to reduce body fat, especially in the abdominal area and around the liver and reduce the size of their liver, especially with laparoscopic procedures. So when we reduce the size of the liver, it can shorten the length of the procedure itself. Like I said, help improve outcomes. And generally also ahead of such procedures, we want to improve and protect muscle mass, improve nutrition so that nutrients can help support the procedure and healing. And in my mind, this liquid diet approach is more likely that someone's going to lose water and muscle than remove fat. And it doesn't necessarily prepare them for their new food life post-surgery either. So I've worked with a few clients over the years who are post-surgical, whether it's gastric bypass or lap band you know, some of those options. And what we see with a lot of these patients is that they have challenges with nutrient absorption. And it requires an even greater level of commitment to our food choices as they often can't eat as much at a time. There's dramatic recovery, a lot of possible complications that we need to address through the food choices. So I think, you know, we often turn to these drastic options when we feel like there's no hope or we feel doomed and we want things to be easier. And while they can, for some people in the long run, you know, and for many be life-saving procedures, for most of us, it's not the final answer. There is so much more work to do. The restrictive diet, both before and after surgery, it's honestly the opposite of easy. And because, you know, let's face it, we didn't get to this place simply because of the food, because we ate things. There's so much more to this story. And we have to challenge ourselves to heal a lot of our relationship with food and these other things in order for these procedures to really be long-term and to give us the outcomes that we're looking for. So needless to say, I'm not a fan of this dental slim jaw wiring device. <laughs> I hope this goes to show us that just because something exists in the world and can get fast results doesn't mean it's necessarily the best choice for us. I want you guys to know you can do this. You are not alone. And if you're considering a weight loss procedure, reach out. Let's chat. Let's just make a plan and make sure you're going into this with all of the information. So that's it, my friends, the rundown on New Zealand's latest weight loss innovation, the Dental Slim Diet Control. So as always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Really, it's that handle on all social media. Our new website, asaladwithasideoffries.com. Please DM me, send me a message through the website. I'd love to hear from you. These are also the best ways to reach out and learn more about working with me. Of course, if you're not already a member, join our membership program by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries to show your support for this podcast, this community, and above all for your health. 
This week, you'll be getting the recipe for the summer Buddha bowls with turmeric chickpeas and 20% off from Green Compass's best-selling product, the USDA Certified Organic Nano Jellies. Now we know why that's important. (laughs) Thank you to Sarah Nielsen. So until next week, everybody, remember CBD could be a great option for you. So check the QR code on the bottle, work with someone knowledgeable so that you know what you're getting, how to use it, and support your endocannabinoid system. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform, share us with a friend, and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.